Dear friends, welcome to Ukraine. Next to me is a real Shahed. We're dealing with electronic warfare, which shot it down and it was recovered here earlier. Today we're making a video focused on how to stop missiles, including ballistic missiles, cruise missiles and kamikaze drones. Shahid, electronic warfare is now saving lives in Ukraine every day and I'm returning to being slow on the train. These are volunteers. The war began in February uh, 2022 and they chose to enlist. They're business owners and agricultural workers. And they find themselves together in the Territorial Brigade, voluntarily enlisted like hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians. And then they say to themselves, actually the missiles falling on our heads and so on, we can also do something about that. They proposed with their own mission, a way to test an electronic warfare method to protect their own city. Uh, and that's the foundation of this company called Lima. It's simply about having been able to operationally validate that their low-cost jamming system, compared to everything we can do here, works, is effective and is quick to deploy. And that's why, from the very beginning, they won hackathons. They received a million dollars, which allows them to actually protect cities. And then, little by little, that's how I got to know them. In Poland, I participated as a judge in a NATO competition to fight against glide bombs. And they are the ones who won it today. Here in front of me, there is the whole series of different antennas and sensors that the Russians have gradually used through evolution. As Ukrainians grow stronger in electronic warfare, they had to use equipment that was more and more complex, more and more expensive, and more and more difficult to source. These are systems the Russians can no longer produce and must now buy from China. I'll summarize for you. At first, they had the equipment that simply had a sensor and a receiver. Since that wasn't enough, they switched to a technology called a controlled reception pattern, antenna controlled reception pattern, antenna. Basically, that's what it means. Each of your antennas will focus on a specific spot in the sky. That means when you have a ground-based electronic warfare jamming system, well, they will try to filter and focus on a particular area. You need to add more antennas since each covers only a small area which means that in reality it requires adding electronic warfare systems on the ground. Typically you need at least as many jammers on the ground as there are sensors on top. So there are multiple physical systems, antennas, and then there are also software systems. And so they gradually evolved with equipment that was more complex. They used software to identify signal origins and filter out those typically coming from below. That's convenient. There was a Ukrainian named Le Francais in France, he was called the Ukrainian. In Ukraine, he's called Le Francais. You won't see him on camera. So you develop the software that finds the best attack angles, right? Yes, that's basically it. So then since you did such a good job, they ended up having to put eight sensors on the controlled reception pattern antenna. And in the end, they had to switch to systems that were even more complex. And at that point, the Russians don't know how to produce them. They must rely entirely on Chinese sources, which are becoming increasingly expensive. With equipment now that has more than 15 detectors, sensors connected to chips that are copies of what is made in the United States. But for example, this chip, if you had to buy it in the United States, it would be like $15,000 to $20,000 just for the chip. They must multiply that with systems that are harder to implement and the advantage obviously is that now that electronic warfare is properly deployed in a number of areas on the front that means the shahids are unable to get through and only the shahids with chinese components which are therefore much more expensive uh, and which represent only 10 percent of the mass uh, can access the areas that will be the most protected these technologies have been integrated into the shahids which make up most as well as into cruise and ballistic missiles on the developments that we can see, which are here in front of us, well, first of all, we don't thank the Swiss because you see the Swiss, they won't provide a defense system because they claim it would mean entering the war. But on the other hand, there are indeed Swiss components that allow global positioning system reception. The Russians are now attempting to hide by using resins to conceal component origins. So, this is an antenna from a Kaliber missile. This is the antenna. It's the antenna block that's connected to this receiver. And then uh, it's the same thing with ballistic missiles. The first versions of the missiles, when they were jammed, when they entered an area where there was jamming. Lima, you had accuracy of about five kilometers. That means you had the missiles landing five or six kilometers away. And so 
even North Korea today has added this type of equipment to try to be a little more accurate. We keep debating the number of antennas, but this only increases costs and setup difficulty. Uh, faced with the number of jammers that are able to make them malfunction so that they are less accurate. Uh, there's always conflict between those firing cannons who claim they're doing all the work. And then the jammers, which actually have an effectiveness that's significant. Free. Once it's installed, it's good for good. So, you had more than 90% of the Shahed drones intercepted, destroyed at that time. But since the Russians started using drones that fly higher, which are harder to intercept and destroy with machine guns, logically, more and more, a growing proportion of these drones are being shot down by electronic warfare equipment. It's the same with cruise missiles. People here tell me stories. There are certain ballistic missiles then that come from very high up and you have to fire one or two Patriot type missiles to destroy them. A Patriot missile costs dollar two million. If three missiles approach, you need to fire six Patriot missiles, which costs 12 million to shoot them down. And in the end, it was electronic warfare that was more widely deployed. Uh, that would allow for very significant effectiveness at a reduced cost. Because a jamming antenna we're talking about fifty thousand dollars and once it's installed it's there for good so even if you need 20 antennas to protect an area that's one million once and for all and after that you're protected against ballistic missiles whereas obviously every time you have to fire a patriot missile each time it's going to cost you millions and millions it's a highly profitable investment for ukrainians and for us if we want to be prepared Here's an anecdote about this Chinese equipment. At first, well, they salvaged spare parts like that from shed drones or missiles they had managed to shoot down, except that they needed intact ones and they also needed the schematics. And so what they did was try to contact the Chinese to buy them as international buyers from any country. That didn't really work. So the Ukrainians, since in their army there are Chinese people who voluntarily came to fight against Russian imperialism, well, these Chinese went to China, and in China it went completely unnoticed. They managed to buy this equipment with the plans, with the signatures, with all the software aspects, and bring them back here to analyze them. So, our French friend, did that help you understand how it worked? Exactly, that's it. So again, to weaken their equipment's effectiveness. So the other advantage of having these controlled reception pattern antenna systems, at least for the Ukrainians in terms of protection, is that now only the Chinese are producing them. That creates a bottleneck, raising production costs and reducing output. And the other thing is that uh, these higher quality CRPAs, uh, you saw how big they are, they're still relatively large. So the size is also a limitation because that means it still has to fit. For example, on the Shahed it fits, but with glide bombs, their 16 controlled reception pattern antenna system doesn't work. So you have to understand that it's a battle. It's a, it's a race between protection and the number of antennas we're going to have. But in the end, there comes a point on missiles, which are also very fast. It doesn't work the same way anymore. Um, then I was also told that, for example, on ballistic missiles, the global positioning system capture system logically since it doesn't stay horizontal when it's coming back down they don't pick up as many satellites as when they're flat or at high altitude overall they'll end up losing them too so jamming remains effective you need to realize that even if we haven't jammed all the sensors completely we're already going to reduce the accuracy and so for example when we have chahed who will no longer rely on his global positioning system, which is very accurate, but on his inertial navigation system, which drifts by a few kilometers every few minutes. And then, of course, with less global positioning system, it's going to be less and less effective in terms of being able to target high value targets. Guys, I can't exactly show you what's around me, but now the next exercise is going to be jamming this receiver. Uh, as you can see, there are eight antennas on it. Uh, it's original, it comes from Russia, so it was graciously provided by the Russians. There are jammers around me that I can't show you because they protect certain areas. And the Ukrainians especially don't want the Russians to know what they look like. So logically, we'll stop at this view. Now I'll check this sensor's global positioning system position on the computer. And how by turning on the different Lima jammers around me, are they going to manage to make it lose its position? So guys, uh, here on the screen we have the different satellites that belong to uh, the different networks. So global positioning system, global navigation, satellite system, maybe Baidu, I'm not sure. And we have their position, which is shown here in relation to us. Okay, so we're going to turn on the jammer now. That's it. We've started our system. So several sources of interference and we'll see how the satellites disappear. 
Ah, now there are over four satellites. The satellites are disappearing, but that's... And that's already very good because there's no solution, of course. So now it's lost, now it... Is lost, he doesn't know where... Uh, he is. When he doesn't have a global positioning system signal, he will use the inertial system. Okay, but the inertial system, but the system... Inertial, it doesn't at all. Precise. And that's why this one fell in the fields, it was diverted and its internal inertial system wasn't enough. Exactly, yes. Uh, that puts us in Lima. That puts us... Puts us in Peru. Yes, exactly. Nice touch. So now... It's not... It's not just that he can't get a signal anymore, it's that he was given a position that was completely wrong. Exactly. It's not just the position... But also his shifting position and speed, which are completely wrong. But you see, for example, now he has false coordinates and false speeds. But yes, of 56 meters per second. That's spoofing, that's spoofing, because before it was jamming the... Jamming? Yes. The jamming, it was just simple jamming, so simple jamming. It blocks the capture solution, the capture, yes, it blocks the... Signals like global positioning system or... Global navigation satellite system. However, with spoofing, it gives it a false solution. It's more complex. If he thinks he's going around in circles... How will he react? Is it him? He may try to change course to reach the new destination or just give up? The system is smart enough to understand that there is... Spoofing, okay, however, he will certainly not use the global positioning system, so the satellite system. Yes, and he will switch to the inertial system. Ah, okay, the inertial system is not accurate enough, not at all. Accurate at all? Not accurate at all, so there will be a deviation of several kilometers. Okay, now, let's demonstrate. As if he was... Exiting the jamming zone, yes, we're simulating leaving the area. Jamming, so now we've cut the signal, so we've cut the fake signals, yes, we've cut... Our signals, we've cut the fake... Signals, I imagine we've turned everything off now. Usually he loses one, then two, then three, maybe more. Mm. That also explains why the Shahets who tried to attack the door. Of the De Reigny. De Reigny, okay, De Reigny, yes, yes, border. They were flying all the way to Romania. And they fell in Romania. Okay, because they were off course, exactly, they were off course, and they didn't know. Exactly where? They were. What's interesting here is that after... Four minutes, without the electronic warfare systems, they still haven't recovered. However, it's moving forward at three to four kilometers per minute. The drone traveled 15 kilometers forward using its poor quality inertial navigation. That means it got lost by several kilometers. Here, the Ukrainians have just reactivated their Lima, which is detected before actual global positioning system signals arrive, because the internal software actually is completely lost once it's been disrupted like that for minutes. Second attempt this time, we're going to jam a Russian missile system. And be careful, the software isn't the same, and it's not the same for a good reason. It's because one of the Russians sold the software. So here we have the official Russian software, that's right, exactly, that's it. It's official Russian software for testing. The missiles, and here we can see a very interesting criterion. In Russian, it's called mean square deviation, which means the mean square deviation. Now, the deviation, or rather the deviation, I... Yes, the deviation, the mean square deviation. It's around seven or eight meters. Okay, that means the missile's accuracy will be around 8 meters from its target. We'll see the effect of the image on the mean square deviation. Okay, by being able to directly test the effectiveness of your Lima on a... Russian missile validation software that you were able to validate, which worked well, exactly. And that is to say the missile will try to correct this position and it will land 500 meters from its target meaning the missile will fall within a kilometer radius around its target logically we saved a few bodies there absolutely friends that's the size of a real kamikaze drone shard normally it has the head up there in the first generation in the early generations it was 25 kilos of explosives now it's up to 80 
Well guys, as you can see, electronic warfare is absolutely essential equipment to be able to survive here on the front. There are low intensity ones in backpacks or on fixed positions or even to protect entire cities. Simply you need more and more of them to be able to deal with the increasing number of controlled reception pattern antenna antennas that we're seeing more and more. But really it does have an effect. Imagine, a JAMA is only 50,000 euros, I'm giving you a rough idea. In France, our Western systems typically cost six figures per JAMA. They have an incredible lead. They just need to develop faster to have international support. And clearly this type of protection is infinitely cheaper and much more relevant than missiles. And the defense we can traditionally offer them, which we've focused on a lot, because when the Russians can fire 1,000 to 3,000 rockets daily that travel 500 to 2,000 meters, obviously it's neither with missiles nor with heavy machine guns that they'll be able to intercept them. So they're depending on electronic warfare. That's the top priority for the next months and years, especially with kamikaze or interceptor drones. They won't be able to scale up in the same way unless they produce thousands and thousands that would be available across the entire territory and ready to go. Really, it's a race for volume, which will mainly be won by electronic warfare. Because in a well-protected area, you are able to destroy 50 Shahids in a single day. A Shahid with controlled reception pattern antenna systems. Today, it costs tens and tens of thousands of euros, the Shahids themselves. They haven't evolved, they haven't changed since the beginning of the war. The main changes are a larger size, a heavier head, and the ability to carry 90 kg of explosives instead of 25 kg. Overall, they're only working on the global positioning system, reception system, and trying to compensate with inertial navigation systems. But overall, structurally, in the long term, it's electronic warfare. And let me tell you, we're still way behind the Ukrainians. So Lima, he's awesome. See you soon for another video. 